Welcome to the Inside Track on Real Estate with the Decker team. And today I've got a special guest. I've got Phil from Mermaid Pools. Uh, Phil is uh, going to talk to us about pools and what, what people can expect around maintenance and uh, you know what kind of pools to buy, all kinds of different things. So, so we're looking forward to this uh, show. I hope you are too. And here we go. So, Phil, tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and the company Mermaid Pools. Yes. Uh, well, Mermaid's been around uh, for 50 years, Ken. We have okay. uh, doing grounds, on grounds. You don't uh, look 50 and, years uh, old, Phil. And above grounds. Well, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, Mermaid has, I, I haven't been around for 50 years. But, okay. uh, so I'm our, our West End expert for in-grounds and, uh, and semi-dug pools. I, I sell above ground pools as well. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, Mermaid offers all kinds of services from... Uh, sales to after service, opening, closing of pools, uh, chemical sales, you name it, water testing. Yeah. Okay, so you do the whole gamut. And Every hot tubs too, I hear. Oh yeah, hot tubs as well. Everything okay. everything to do with water in your backyard, Mermaid can, <laughs> Mermaid's got you covered. Except for ponds? How about ponds? Yeah, we, we, can, we can help you out maybe with ponds. I can refer <laughs> someone to you. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. So so really the types of pools, there's, there's in-ground, you mentioned that halfway, I call it an on-ground. Is yep. that, is on that ground, a, is that semi-dug, a semi-dug, uh, semi-in-ground, okay. there's a whole bunch of different things. All right, and then we have an above-ground, yeah. a little less permanent, Yeah. and then uh, hot tubs. Yeah, hot and tubs. And then I guess there's also the kind of infinity, not infinity pools, but the ones that you... Uh, swim, swim spots. Lap, yeah. Swim spots, yeah, is so that what they call spa. them? Yeah, so we have okay. those as well. Yeah. All right, excellent. And so what's the benefit or downfall of the different types of pools? Sure. Well, there's there's a lot of factors when it comes into making a decision like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, questions like, uh, is this your dream house? Is this your permanent sort of house that you're going to live in? And yeah, you want to put in a pool, well, maybe in-ground's the way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you know, you're in the military or this is, you know, just a, a house that you're going to live in for a little bit and move on to the next one, maybe an above ground or even a semi. So it depends really what the end game is. Um, obviously, in-ground pools are much more permanent, mm -hmm. uh, much more structurally sound, uh, and you can do different shapes and really form the backyard to exactly what you're looking for. Okay, so you can customize the shape oh, of the absolutely. pool, or are there just yeah. different shapes you can buy? I mean, we have standard shapes that we sort of go off of, but mm -hmm. I can do any shape you want for an oh. in-ground pool. Yeah. Okay, cool. From a rectangle to, you know, and Mickey so they Mouse's head. <laughs> to Mickey. You Have you done a Mickey Mouse's Not head? Not yet. I, I no. always, I always want pitch to? it. Nobody, nobody <laughs> takes me up on it. <laughs> well, maybe it's because you're in the wrong state. If you're I in guess, the state of yeah. Florida, maybe. Yeah, maybe, yeah, at yeah. that point. Okay. Yeah. So are there considerations other than temporariness or, or uh, length of time someone's going to be in the, in the yard? Obviously, uh, they all come in different sizes. Sure, yeah. Uh, are there indicators based on the ground that sometimes you can't put in an in-ground pool? Yeah, or? yeah, no, absolutely. So when you're looking to put in an in-ground pool, it's really a, a good idea to have someone, you know, a professional come out and have a look at your, at your, uh, your uh, property. Mm -hmm. Also, to a land survey. If you ever deal with a pool builder that doesn't really want to look at your land survey, then they may not have your best interests at heart. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want your pool put in your neighbor's yard? Is yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, Or easements, right? That's a huge one. So if you have easements yeah. on your property, you can't put a pool there. And if you do, you're going to get in you know, big trouble, if any, to access that easement. Okay. So, you know, stuff like that is very important that uh, an expert sort of has mm -hmm. a look at it. Um, so, uh, yeah. And then also, two distances from your property lines. So for uh, uh, an in-ground pool, you have to be six and a half feet from your property line. So if you have a very small property, okay, is that to the is that to the landscaping or to the actual edge of the pool or what's, so to the what's water's edge of the pool? To the water's edge of the pool, right. six feet, six and a half feet, six and a half feet. Yeah, and if you have a, a semi-dug pool, it's only four feet. So for instance, oh. some backyards <laughs> that have a very small property, yeah. I, I actually recommend. Well, in this case, you'd have a eight-foot pool if you go with a, an in-ground pool, or you can have a twelve-foot pool for a semi-dug pool. Okay. So that also comes into play when you're when you're trying to figure out mm -hmm. what the best. Know, solution for your okay. backyard is. and what about above ground is there a limit to the lot line as well yeah absolutely so the height of the pool has to be is the distance away from the house so if it's a 54 inch pool or away from the property line so 54 mm -hmm. inch pool 54 inches away from the property line. oh cool yeah. didn't know yeah. that so all kinds of little rules and then of course there's fencing rules and that sort of thing for safety absolutely yeah okay so and um so so let's say someone's uh installing a pool other than other than setbacks, what kind of things would they need to know? So it depends what sanitation you want uh, and how much maintenance you want to do. So salt water systems are much, much less maintenance, so much less chemicals as well. Um, and then cartridge filter versus sand filter. So a cartridge filter 
the water goes through it. Mm -hmm. There's paper filters that help clean the water. Okay. Uh, go through the salt cell. The, that chlorinates the water. Right. Um, the chlorine kills everything it's supposed to kill, reverts back to salt. The process just goes on forever. Uh, as long as you have a pump, electricity, and water, and salt in your water, your water is always crystal okay. clear. So you have to add some salt from time to time? Yeah. So anytime you're going to lower, uh, let's say when you close your pool and winterize mm -hmm. it, you're going to take water out. And that means your salt content in the water when you fill it back up is going to be lessened. Okay. So you have to add just you okay. know, a couple bags of salt. Oh, okay. So the my understanding was that the salt actually got used up over time no. through the through the process of creating the chlorine. No. So the salt is always there, it just reverts back and just stays in there. I mean obviously if bathers get out, you're taking a little bit of salt water with you, but picture in a forty thousand mm -hmm. gallon pool, not that much. Yeah, no. Right. And evaporation doesn't evaporate the salt, no. it stays in the water. So that's correct. So even if you add more water, your your actual amount of salt in the pool is the same. Now, okay. when you when you take salinated water out when you winterize, then mm -hmm. when you put new water in, it doesn't isn't salinated. Then, put then a few salt. bags of salt every every year, kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that sounds a lot less expensive to maintain over. Less expensive, over long haul. easier, um, and do let's say you go camping with your family, so you go mm -hmm. away for a week. You come back to a chlorine pool; it's green, so you have to put all kinds of chemicals in it before you can go swimming. Salt water right. pool, you get out of the car, you jump in the pool. Okay, and so the saltwater pool, does it also take less chemicals because it's salt water, so, so right. algae doesn't grow in it easily? Well, that's just it. Uh, well, mm -hmm. I mean, if you don't, if you're not, if your pump's not running, then the algae will grow. As soon as you have stagnant water, sure. Okay. But as far as chemical, yeah, you, once in a while you'll have to shock your pool, sure, a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but typically, that salt system will just work all by very, itself. Very and cool. And, and so, what, what would be the cost difference between a, a salt chlorination type system? And a regular chlorine system. So a regular chlorine system is nothing. So you just get jugs of liquid chlorine or you yeah. get granulated chlorine and then you mix it and then you put it in the water every time you need yeah. to, which okay. is like once every two or three days, uh, mm -hmm. you know, once a week. Um, whereas a salt system, it's an upfront cost because you yeah. have to buy the actual salt control and the salt cell okay. um, and then install it. So now Mermaid does offer very good deals on salt because we want to get people into that. It's a lower right. maintenance, easier mm -hmm. to use. Yeah. Okay, and so the rough idea on pricing, maybe for an above ground pool or an in ground pool, how yeah. much extra to go to salt chlorination? Probably eighty percent more um, chemical wise you're going to spend on, uh, and so it depends on the pool, right? I mean, if you have mm -hmm. a, a twelve foot above ground or above ground pool versus a you know twenty by forty in ground pool, you know, price well, a big difference. Huge. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, but I meant the actual machine. Oh, the machine. So yeah. uh, for an above ground pool, it's uh, call it eight hundred sixty five bucks to get you started. Um, okay. But that's not the only price difference. So picture you want resin walls and you want resin, uh, yeah. resin, sorry, resin rails on the top and you want resin Because uh, you can't have pillars. steel because the salt will rest it? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Same thing with in-ground? Is there yeah. a difference? So not, not, not exactly. So an in-ground pool you can go with a steel wall. So okay. it's a galvanized coated steel wall. Mermaid though suggests that you go polymer. So it's a resin polymer, uh, much more, uh, about 10 times stronger than steel. Uh, manufactured differently, um, hmm. and again, it, it it lives up to that uh, uh, to that salt water. You're never going to have any corrosion ever. It's also got a 50-year warranty that's not prorated. That is transferable when you sell your house as well. Nice, which is yeah, nice. Not prorated. Yeah, yeah, it's a big one. Okay, so I've heard cases where uh, there's water tables too high for a in-ground pool, mm -hmm. if you run into that, is that true? Or yeah, that absolutely, just, yeah? it does happen. Um, so, you know, retaining walls, drainage, you know, Mermaid does offer drainage, so we put drainage all around our pools mm -hmm. and put it to a basin. But if you're, for instance, Greeley, that's a very, very high water table. Mm -hmm. At that point, you actually have to build up above grade, then dig the pool out. So you build retaining walls, build above grade, then dig your pool, and there you go. Okay, and that's where an in-ground, like a half level, would, would maybe might, come in handy might be if a better your idea. water table's yeah. high? Yeah. One of the advantages to a semi-dug pool is mm -hmm. um, it's got a sand bottom. If you have a high water table, I have to now do a grout bottom. So a bit more money, but still less expensive than a, than a, a full in-ground pool. Okay. So lots of But factors. typically not as deep. For yeah. So an, a semi-dug pool, it's a kit. So it's just like an above-ground pool, basically, mm -hmm. um, but it's sunk in the ground. So it's, they're okay. set sizes, set shapes. You know, I can do a kidney. I can do a rainbow. I can do some neat shapes with them, but mm -hmm. this is the size. Whereas an in-ground pool, you know, I want it a bit, a bit deeper on this one, and I, I want it, you know, the the depth here and the size here, and jet this staircase out, no problem. Whereas a semi-dug pool, it's six foot depth maximum. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. So the steps of someone thinking, hey, I've been thinking about getting a pool for a while. What are the steps? 
So, um, you know, come come and see us in the store. Uh, have a look mm -hmm. at all the products. Um, bring a copy of your land survey if you're thinking for an in-ground or a semi-dug. Uh, even a, uh, an above-ground, it's, it's a good idea to have that good land idea. survey if yeah. you have one. Mm -hmm. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. We can still make do. We can go on GeoOttawa and I can still get property lines and stuff like that, but it won't be mm -hmm. as good as a, as a physical land survey. Um, you know, Sometimes the stakes are still visible. You can find yeah, them or yeah, whatever. Exactly. And then so when we go out, a pretty we good measure. Idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, check for things like overhead wires. You know, if you have an overhead wire running through the middle of your yard, mm -hmm. ask Hydro if you can move that before you even start thinking about a pool. Because there can be no overhead wires above your above your water. Oh, is that right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Didn't realize that. You know, so stuff like that. Um, access to the backyard. That's a big thing as well. So mm -hmm. if you're looking at buying a house and saying, oh, I want to put a pool in, and you only have, you know four feet of access between the houses, yeah, I'm going to have a lot of trouble getting equipment back there. So mm -hmm. maybe an in-ground isn't the way to go, maybe an above-ground. Above-ground's easier. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I, all, those are all factors that come into it. You know, if I have okay. huge access, 12 feet of access, I can come in with a big machine. You know, five feet of access, tiny little machine. Four <laughs> feet of access, it's, it's two fellas <laughs> with shovels and a wheelbarrow. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it does make a difference. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And then whether you want your pool this year or next year. Yeah, or four <laughs> years from now. You know? <laughs> 20 by 40 two and guys two guys with, with a shovel. shovel. Yeah, it's going to take them a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. And then, um, like, for instance, my place, I've been pondering the thought of, of doing a pool. One of the issues is I have a septic system, so there must be some yeah. kind of a setback Absolutely, away yeah. from that. Yeah. And then also I have a, a drainage creek in the back of my property, yeah. which apparently I have to be 100 feet away from. Yeah, yeah. so, so there, there's and some setbacks there. is that 100 feet to the water's edge? It would or, be to the, or, on, an in the pool, on an in-ground pool be to the brick. So okay. So to the to or to that that um, that uh, the concrete deck that runs all the way around. That's right. two and a half foot concrete collar. Okay. Uh, so so that two and a half feet. Then I can landscape sure, after yeah, that. Absolutely. They don't care. Yeah. yeah. And okay. then for um, for the septic bed, it's sixteen point you know sixteen feet four inches from from there. We can before we can build anything. Okay. From the actual bed or from the um, whatever you call it. The, I've lost the name now. There's like a um, the field kind of the, thing? Yeah, there's stuff around the yeah, actual bed. Yeah, no, from bed. the actual bed. From the actual yeah. where the pipes are. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then uh, uh, we're, not, we're not able to drive over that. So there, your access comes back into this. So let's say that's on one side of the house, and yeah, I have 12 feet of access, but my septic's right here. And mm -hmm. on the other side, I have four feet of access. So we're two guys with shovels again. Because <laughs> I can't drive over that with my equipment. Yeah, right? yeah, so. exactly. So those are all little factors that come into play. And again, it's if you, if you get an expert to come out to the, the house and have a look, then... You're, you're way ahead of the yeah. game. Yeah, and so so come and see you at the at the and then kind of I guess figure out a budget because mm -hmm. yeah. obviously these budget. things cost different yeah. amounts of money. Uh, and two, we figure out a solution. So at Mermaid, we use uh, Pool Studio software. So um, I take your survey and then I'm able to put it in three dimensions with your house, with your backyard, and we can figure out exactly which pool is going to fit based on setbacks to scale everything. Mm -hmm. So we do a full 3D design. You know, I handle the permit application. I handle the permit as uh, the permit drawing as well. Uh, okay. So we go from there, and then a site inspection follows, and we go from there. Yeah. So budget, yeah, that's a big one. You know, mm -hmm. pools can be anywhere from five thousand to hundred thousand, depends what you're looking for. Yeah. Okay. But it's a whole backyard solution as well, and you know, we keep in mind stuff like, uh, you know, you want to have room for a barbecue and a patio, and where are you going to live, and and which way should the lights point in the pool? Because okay, we're going to sit out here at night. Well, I don't want the light shining in my eyes, so you got to make sure mm -hmm. those little things. You now, room to kick a soccer ball in the backyard. You still want to have some if, stuff. If you want to do that. If you yeah. want to kick a soccer yeah. ball, sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of people in the city, they're, if they're putting in a pool, it's taking their backyard. Uh, sometimes. In the country, you got yeah. typically a lot yeah. more space. Yeah. All right. So if you're just joining us, uh, you're listening to the Inside Track on Real Estate. And I'm Ken Decker. And today I'm speaking with Phil from Mermaid Pools. And we're learning all kinds of great things about uh, what it takes to put a pool in your backyard. And uh, I'm, I don't think people really need to, well, maybe they do, need to know the advantages of having a pool. Obviously, the kids stay home more. <laughs> you get to see them. Yeah. Uh, the neighbor's kids usually yeah. come around. <laughs> you, make a lot of, you make a lot of friends. <laughs> make a lot of friends with a pool. Okay. And uh, nice thing we're talking about maintenance. It seems to be a lot less maintenance with the salt-type chlorination yeah. salt pool. Water, yeah. Saltwater pool. Saltwater and cartridge filter. That's an important. Are the one. cartridge filters better than the sand filter? Uh, way less maintenance. So a lot less maintenance. You don't have to backwash. There's, you know, once a month you take the filters out, you hose them off, you put them back, you turn the system back on. Oh, so they're reusable? 
Yeah, well, once a year, change them. Okay. But uh, every month, I you know just hose them off and put them back, and you're all set. Oh, cool. Yeah, much better. All right. And, you know, we used to see these, uh, we call them creepy crawlers or whatever, the, yeah. the things that go through, yeah. suck and move around on your pool and clean it. Yeah. Do you still recommend that kind of thing in uh, the salt water? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Definitely. You want to have one of those. Uh, there's robotic cleaners as well. So they look like little tanks that drive mm -hmm. around. They have four wheels and they drive around and they clean up. And, and they're a caddy. So they actually have um, like a, a vacuum bag in them. Like it's a holster, yeah. Yeah. the canister, so you pull you know, the little thing when he's full, he floats up to the top, then you pull him out and you empty the canister and throw him back in and they just go by themselves like a little Roomba for your pool. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Um, now, a lot of times we talk about resale. I don't know if you get into that with your, with your clients as far as resale value, what the pool brings in value. Yeah. Do you... So sometimes you on the spot I mean, here as a realtor. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah. So uh, again, it depends on you know uh, the, what's the price of this house. It's well, it, it could be a million or it could be two dollars. It doesn't matter unless someone wants to buy it, right? Mm -hmm. So when people say it takes you know pool in your backyard takes money away from the backyard, well that's not necessarily true if there's a whole bunch of people looking to buy a, a house with a, a pool in it. Yep. You know that's so. True. Uh, it depends if the market's there for people that are looking for it. And I can tell you right now that it is. I have lots of customers that actually get me to go to um, a house that they're looking to buy, either whether they want because they want to put a pool in and they like this house but it has mm -hmm. no pool, or they've gotten me to go to their house because they're, they like this house and there is a pool in there. They want to know if, if they should get it. You know. So when you're looking at a house with a pool, you know, ask mm -hmm. for the service, uh, so the service uh, history, uh, who has opened and closed it, uh, uh, okay. water tests, stuff like that and you know maybe get an expert mermaid does offer a service where we come out and we have a look at the pool itself as well so, so you'll do like a pool inspection mm -hmm. for someone buying a house yeah. that has a pool exactly so a cursory inspection we'll go out um, have a look at it mm -hmm. and let them know uh, if you're buying a house in the winter have a condition in there if you haven't seen what the pool looks like have a condition in the in the uh, in the sale of the house mm -hmm. that says you know once the pool is open then we'll yeah you know what I mean? we actually have about four different pool clauses depending on the time of year and when the house is closing. Perfect. There you go. Uh, if it's fall time and it's not closing till after the pool would have been closed, then we require them to use a professional to close it. Perfect, yeah. Uh, and if it's already closed, we, we might put a condition in that says a professional will open it and if there's any damage to it that needs to be repaired, the seller will be responsible. Perfect. Yeah. You know, things of that nature yeah. and we, we, watch, we watch that pretty closely. Uh, or if the pool is not open and it's closing in uh, June, we'll, we'll stipulate that it must be open and clear and working and mm -hmm. clean. Because yeah. I've, I've seen people take possession of a house, mm -hmm. and when they take it, the pool is just yep. <laughs> full of frogs and green because and yep. they just gave up looking after it once it was yeah. sold. Which well, is I had the same good. thing happen uh, in Gatineau with a customer uh, last year. So I went to their house, and sure enough, they didn't winterize the pool at all. Oh, here's great. the key. See you later. And and the whole pool collapsed. It was an above ground pool. The whole pool collapsed. Mm -hmm. So and they're like, well, what do we do? I said, well, you buy a new buy pool. Buy a new pool. <laughs> yeah. Especially <laughs> with the above ground. Right? That's it. Yeah. Okay. So if you ever go out to your in ground pool and there's no water in it, what's generally the cause? So if the in ground pool's empty, like it's well, pretty much empty. Yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> typically that's uh, that's what happened is it's got a bottom drain on it and there's been a leak somewhere in the plumbing underneath and it's drained out. Uh, so Mermaid doesn't even do bottom drains anymore. Okay. So we only have, it's called an Aqua Genie, so it's an all-in-one skimmer in return. So water goes in one, goes through the system, comes right back out that Aqua Genie, which is right near the top of the wall. So okay. really leaks, I mean, you'd have to go in there with a jackhammer. To, That's um, if, it's to a, if it's a concrete pool, right? The, That's correct, yeah. Yeah. So what is the substructure? A lot of them are, are steel or resin? Yeah, so steel, resin, uh, it's a three and a half foot wall, that, uh, that, um, uh, and then grout underneath that. So uh, three and a half foot wall, there's a concrete collar that runs around the outside of it mm -hmm. at that three and a half foot wall height. And then for a resin pool, there's actually uh, X-frame buttresses that are attached to this resin wall that has a honeycomb pattern inside for more strength even. And then sauna tubes. Every about three feet, there's a sauna tube that actually gets filled with concrete as well. And then another, and another batch of concrete goes on the top. So okay. it's, a, it's a tank. And then a hand grouted bottom all the way on, underneath. And then the liner goes on that? That's correct. And the liner covers the whole thing. Okay. And I'd recommend a 40 gauge liner when you're doing an in-ground pool. So it's the thickest, strongest liner you can get. Okay. Yeah. And what's the typical price on a, say a 20 by 40 pool to put a liner in a couple thousand dollars? To or? replace the liner for yeah. that kind of pool? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a couple, a few thousand, 3,500 yeah. 3, about. Okay. Yeah. 
All right. So if someone's buying a house uh, and it doesn't have a pool, uh, we could we could put in a condition that you come and look at it, make sure that they can install a pool. Absolutely, yeah. That kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, okay. Certainly. Uh, you Wonderful. know, again, things like stuff that I could see that other people wouldn't, right? Um, so f you know, fencing is also an issue, right? So I've mm -hmm. gone gone into backyards and said, okay, well, great, we want a pool here. I said, okay, well, you don't have a fence at all, or you have a fence that doesn't meet code. That's another big one, right? right. So even with above ground pools, you know, fencing is a big thing. Mm -hmm. So you have to meet code, so I can go in the back and say, okay, well, there one, there's three overhead wires right here, so yeah, you can't have a pool. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Next house. <laughs> Pick another house, yeah. yeah. And I have done that for several clients. Uh, that uh, We've gone to three different houses. You know. mm -hmm. He took me out for dinner, though, so just saying. <laughs> just saying. Dinner goes a long way, so <laughs> yeah, that you does. come out? It does. Okay. It helps. <laughs> <you know. laughs> All right. And so do you, uh, when you, when someone's thinking of a pool and you're in checking a, a property out that yeah. they haven't purchased yet. Are you charging a fee for that to, to come out so and look it, at that? Yeah, we will. Um, mm -hmm. uh, in certain instances, uh, we will. Uh, generally, that fee, though, I'll roll right back into the pool price if they buy the pool from me. So okay. it just goes towards the pool purchase at that point. Okay, because you would have had to do an, yeah, exactly. a site inspection exactly. anyways, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, so you just, yeah. okay. Now, for people looking just to have, uh, they're, they're looking to put a pool in their backyard anyway, uh, then, yeah, we do a site inspection as well. Generally, I like to have a meeting in the store so I can show the different options and really get mm -hmm. a real good idea of what you're looking for. Then I like to go do a site inspection and, uh, and go from there. Yeah, and I think most people want to have a ballpark budget Absolutely. plan before they even have you out because, yeah. you know, they come into the store, they see the options, they go, okay, so this in-ground is going to cost me 50000 or exactly. 80000 and, yeah. and they go, okay, yeah, I think that, that works. So and I that doesn't usually I include... In the, um, um, landscaping, no. yeah. No. So no landscaping, no repairing the lawn that got exactly. dug up by the machines exactly. driving back and forth. Yeah. And or fencing, like let's say we had dirt. to take fence portions out, mm -hmm. and then that's the cost also that the homeowner has to assume at that point. Right, and then put it back in or whatever. And electricians, and gas fitters, there is quite a bit, even the water trucks, right? You've know, you mm -hmm. got to fill the thing up. So. Right. Okay, yeah. let's, let's talk about heaters for a minute. Sure. Um, Different styles of heaters, different yeah. different options. What, what's out there? There's all kinds of different ones. I mean, uh, typically there's gas in Ottawa. Gas heaters are usually the way to go. Natural gas heaters. Okay. Um, in Quebec, I only sell uh, heat pumps, so it's like a reverse air conditioner, mm -hmm. uh, but it draws electricity, right? So yeah. in Quebec electricity rates are much much lower. It makes more sense to do a heat pump there. Okay. Uh, it also depends on what you want to accomplish, right? Do you want you know because I have different BTUs of heaters, so. Uh, you know, a, a 337, for instance, on a 20 by 40 will bring up your pool a degree or two an hour. Uh, but if you go one heater more, then it can bring it up, you know, three, four degrees an hour, right? So That's it depends what you want to accomplish, yeah. But it depends what you want to accomplish. If you only go swimming um, on mm -hmm. the weekends and mm -hmm. grandma won't go in unless it's 93 degrees, <laughs> right? Then, okay, you need the big heater because then when grandma comes over, oh, crank it up. So, you know. So it depends what you're yeah. trying to accomplish. Yeah, and so what what is a heater other than having it warmer when you want to swim in it? Uh, does it how much do you typically extend your yeah. use of your pool yeah. you length can, of time? You can usually in bookend season. the season by two months. Yeah. So a month on each end. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So the next are eight weeks of eight mm. nine weeks of swimming. Precious, That's important. Precious you, nine weeks. Yeah, when <laughs> you're when you're doing yeah. something like this. I mean, yeah. obviously when it's not hot out people don't generally want to jump in a pool right. unless the pool's warm <laughs> yeah but the the real trick is you know in september when you get those three really nice days mm -hmm. right that you want to go swimming but the pool's at 55 because you've had 10 days leading up to those that days, cold days yeah. and so uh, now if you have a heater okay we can crank the pool and make it not ridiculously cold and then mm -hmm. you still can swim in it, right? right? And then you use those three beautiful days as opposed to just looking at the pool going, well, it's nice, it's really hot, but that's 55 degrees, and <laughs> no thanks. Yeah. So what about, you know, in Florida, they have these big enclosures and that kind of stuff over yeah. the pools. Now, of course, they don't have snow loads to worry about, so they yeah. screen in over it and exactly. around it and keep, keep the lizards and the alligators Crocodiles and the bugs, and, bugs and all kinds yeah. of stuff out, right? Yeah. Uh, do, we, do we have a solution for, for bugs? Because bugs are really basically the only thing that... Yeah deters us from being outside <laughs> yeah so uh not really i mean there's all kinds of little things you can buy i mean mermaid doesn't specifically sell anyone or endorse anyone but i okay. mean citronella i use in my backyard those little coils i use mm -hmm. um you know the the, the candles the tor tiki torches okay whatever and do you find some people are building indoor pools still 
Uh, I haven't come across very, very, very many. Uh, it's usually when it's a new, new build. New build, and, put it in at the and, same time. And we have to go in first. So if you're thinking of putting in uh, a pool inside mm -hmm. and you're building your own house, bring us in first. Yeah. 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 I've sold a number of houses with indoor pools. And uh, one of the tricky parts is inside air quality. A lot of times you start, yeah, exactly. you, you're smelling chlorine through your house. Mm -hmm year-round kind of yeah, thing yeah, yeah. but the beauty is you get to use your pool year-round yeah. it's expensive to, to keep it heated and keep the room warm and all that yeah. but for someone that's really into swimming that's uh yeah, it might be worth it and it's also worth looking at maybe the swim spa option as well at that point okay so and a swim spa you can put in the house same idea in the house or outside in the house or outside yeah. and so now in a swim spa is the temperature of the water usually at spa temperature all winter like no nope, you can of thing, put it you can put it wherever you want yeah, so as long as it's uh, not below zero yeah, <laughs> it's hard to swim in ice. <laughs> so you can set it. You can set it at the, the one in my showroom on my pool court right now. Is set at about eighty-two. Okay. Um, and but I mean, in the winter you can turn it up to ninety, hundred. I mean, I don't know if I'd want to swim in one hundred and three degrees, mm -hmm. but uh, okay. Could. All right. Well, that's great, Phil. Uh, I'm just going to highlight one of our houses we have for sale now. Sure. Uh, really appreciate the information, and I'm sure our listeners have learned a lot about in ground, on ground, above ground, and spas today. So we're going to talk about a lovely home uh, right in Barhaven, actually, in uh, Stonebridge area. And this one is room for a pool, although it's literally two minutes to the Minto Sports Complex where the pool is. <laughs> so so well, someone a, could walk to a public pool. It. That's a public pool. I know. It's not the You're same thing. Pool. Yeah. yeah. Public pools are not really where you go with your company and your kids and just kind of... Yeah. Will, will they let you bring the barbecue? Barbecue and your sure. drinks there, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> probably not. Right. And, uh, but at any rate, it's close to the park, close to the uh, soccer football fields. Beautiful house, four bedroom, um, walnut floors, dark walnut floors, just gorgeous. Uh, priced at 569000 It's It's got main floor family room, uh, main floor living room. And then a dining room enclosed with two French doors. Uh, quite a nice place. And then for the you know the winter months where we kind of cocoon inside, it has a beautiful um, rec room with a spare bedroom and bathroom down down there, an ensuite bathroom. So if the in-laws are coming over for a weekend, you got a place for them. And it's got the little theater area in that rec room. So great house. If you'd like to see that or any other house, give the Decker team a call at six one three. 860-4663. That's 613-860-4663. And if you have any ideas for future shows that you'd like to hear about, give us a call again at 613-860-4663. Have a great day. What you